All right, everyone, it's, it's six-ish, almost. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I am Stephanie Flynn, I'm the Executive Director of the Schneck Foundation, and um, we're so happy you're with us this evening. Uh, wellness is extremely important, and you're about to hear from the very best in the business. Um, so I wanna ask, how many of you have listened to Dr. Winley talk before? You have a following. You poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who have not, um, you're in for a treat. Um, this is, you're going to walk away with so much information. Um, and I really think you'll probably even feel better by the time you leave here. Uh, just to let you know, restrooms are in the hallway. So come on in. Restrooms are in the hallway. Feel free to come and go as you need. There is some information in front of you about Dr. Finley and his practice uh, that you can take home with you. There's also a notes worksheet, uh, take notes, anything that you feel is very important that you want to, to personally uh, retain from this. Um, I am going to let Bridget Molinari, who is a foundation volunteer and one of my friends, uh, tell a little bit about um, her volunteerism and also a little bit of a testimonial. Thank you, Stephanie. Huh. Hello, my name is, oh wow, look at everybody. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Pardon? So that's an interesting name. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Um, my name's Bridget Molinari, and I've been a volunteer with the Schneck Foundation for quite some time. I'm on community relations, and um, my husband and I are also patients of Dr. Whitley's, and we have gone, just like tonight, and retained information um, for, from one of these programs. And about two years ago, I went through chemotherapy. I had no hair, no eyelashes, nothing. But it's because of these programs through Dr. Winley that we learned um, how to support my body during chemotherapy. And even if you learn one, one of many things that you can apply in your life, it's, it's amazing. So from us, we learned so much about nutrition and it really supported me and I really feel that that's why I'm here in front of you today, because of what we learned. And then I went through, um, numbers went down, I was hospitalized here at Schneck with the finest of care. And then through that, through what I learned through Dr. Winley, is how I selected the foods that were offered. And they thought I was gonna be here for one to two weeks, more like two weeks. But because they said the processes that I had in place, and that was nutrition, that I was out within four days. So, um, just so honored to be able to stand up here in front of you and introduce Dr. Whitley. Come on in, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, welcome. Good to see you. Um, Dr. Steve Winley is a family practice physician with advanced training in integrative medicine which blends scientifically proven practices with the best of conventional medicine. He attended Indiana University of Medicine and completed his residency at Ball Memorial Hospital. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Whitley. Thank you. Thank you guys hear me okay? Thank you. Now, okay, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, and, and thank you, Bridget, uh, for, for those very, very nice words. And thank you to the Hospital Foundation for hosting this event. And events like this, it's wonderful to uh, participate with the community as, as we grow and as we learn together. And, and I, I enjoy doing these talks. I, I, I used to do a lot of these, and then, then COVID uh, slowed things down for a while. So I, I told my wife, I feel like I'm going to be a, a little bit rusty. So if I don't get my punchlines quite right, just hang in there with me. Just, just <laughs> smile anyway, okay? But uh, I'm thrilled to have you all here. We're going to cover a lot of stuff. If, if you fall asleep, I'll, I'll, I'll move a little faster. But uh, we're going to cover a lot on, on several topics. And, and we'll go through it and hopefully uh, give you some good information to serve as a foundation for wellness. And, and we can answer questions anytime. If you have questions through it or at the end, if you want to write down some questions, I'm happy to go through those as well. And, and like I said, we're, we've got a lot of topics. I kind of broke it down this way with uh, 
diet, then, then movement means more like movement slash exercise. We're going to talk about toxins, which isn't the greatest topic, but, but it's an educational topic. I, there, there's some things I really want people to know, things that I've been learning really the past 25 years, but things have really kind of come to light the past year. So I want to cover a few things that way. We're going to talk about spirit and kind of emotional health, and then we're going to talk about community. And so we're going to jump in. Uh, if you can see it, the, the, the ladies looking in the beauty department at uh, a new product, and her supportive husband says, should I get you a shopping cart? And uh, I, I assume he's just trying to help out. Um, so years ago, uh, nearly a century ago, Thomas Edison said that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but we're going to be interested in diet and, and in prevention of disease. That was where he was hoping medicine would go, and it's, and it's still where we need to go and include with all the, the great skills and great tools that we have, we, the things that we have here at Schneck. We want to continue to work on diet and, and exercise and prevention. So, in, in talking about food, if you go on uh, the internet or if you listen to a podcast or what have you, it, it, this could get really complicated. I had a visit today with a patient who's extremely knowledgeable and, and he's been doing very, very well. His, his, his numbers are very good, he's very healthy, especially um, compared to his peers. His energy level is good. He can, uh, frankly, out-exercise most people 10 years younger than him. But he said, Doc, I, I'm listening to all this stuff, and I, I, I was eating this way, and people are red in the face telling me I need to eat this way, and I, I don't even know what to do. And so we, we kind of get lost in information, but we, we need to just think back simply. We, most of us need more fruits and vegetables, especially the vegetables. We just don't do it. As a country, we just don't do this. And it affects cancer risk and heart disease risk and blood sugar and diabetes risk. It affects your immune system. Uh, we, we even saw this to a degree with COVID and, and countries that had uh, less inflammatory disease issues. They uh, had less sequelae in, in a lot of respects from COVID than, than we did as a nation. And people will tell me, yeah, I know, Doc, I know what to do, but we just don't do it. Uh, this is a slide I like to show. It's got some older data that d just shows only a quarter of the population will hit that five servings of fruits and vegetable mark, and that actually, that number's going down. It's, it's approaching 10% or less in many age brackets. 10% of the population or less is getting five <coughs> servings of fruits and vegetables a day which I would say is, the, is kind of the minimum side you really want to be. Uh, two to three fruits, two to three vegetables, I would tell you three and three of each. So we've really got to make some changes there. But if we do, the payoff is tremendous. At this point, the uh, health care uh, expenditures for this country are $4.5 trillion. Uh, and you think of all the advancements we have, uh, $4.5 trillion is what we're spending. Traditionally, we have ranked somewhere around 37th to 40th in the world in terms of our healthcare performance. We typically spend two to three times other what are called first world countries, uh, but yet we tend to rank uh, not as strongly as they do. So, so we've got a lot of work to do, but a lot of it just starts with what we're eating. So we're going to go through just a couple topics here. In terms of uh, protein, we get asked a lot, like, should I eat red meat or should I not? Should I eat fish or this or that? I, I tell people the main thing I want is, is that you just get it from clean sources, which means we, we don't want, um, if you eat animal protein, we don't want to be eating things that are coming from animals that are fed um, a lot of antibiotics or a lot of hormones. We want to get it from clean sources, and that's one of the advantages we have in our community. We have a lot of local farmers who are uh, producing things at a, at a very quality level that we can benefit from, uh, and, and we just need to maximize that. I, I get my beef from a local farm. There are many local farms available who do this, who have very good quality products, and, and I'm happy to pass that information on if, 
if anybody has some specifics for me, but uh, we, we want clean uh, proteins. We want good fats. When you hear the word fat, you think bad, and there are bad fats, we're gonna cover that, and there are good fats. These are your good fats, okay? Olive oil, walnuts, avocados, uh, even coconut oil. And then, um, again, if it's fed right, grass-fed butter has a lot of vitamins in it. Uh, fish is a good fat. Those are needed in the body, we have to have those. Um, but when we look over at the bad fats, these are really bad. Okay, these tend to be the man-made fats, the factory-made fats, uh, that often go through a lot of chemical processing, and then are often used for deep frying. Unfortunately, as good as a lot of those foods taste, they are terrible for us. They are really bad for heart disease, they are really bad for cancer risk, and a lot of the experts that I follow are saying this is number one. The bad fats are our biggest issue. We've, we've got to tackle that. We've got to get these bad fats. They're often listed as partially hydrogenated oils, or again, they're just uh, they're just an oil that that had to be manufactured uh, outside of olive oil, outside of avocado oil. Those are okay, uh, but any of the others are just trouble. Of course, the big one is sugar. It, it's always going to be a big one. Uh, we're always going to talk about sugar because we all eat too much of it. And it's put in everything. Why do they put sugar in ketchup, for example? Well, they, they put it in there so we'll buy more, but it's in everything. And sometimes it's hard to even know how much sugar you're getting when they're sneaking it in a lot of places. But do take inventory of how much sugar you're getting, and especially high fructose corn syrup. That is one that uh, I don't think is healthy, and, and, and I, I just, I, I, I kind of, it's kind of a political stance for me. I just don't, I don't think it should be used. So I, I, I try to avoid it for, for multiple reasons. It's hard on the liver. It, it certainly causes weight gain. It's bad for the eyes. We know a lot of the processing uh, where, where it's made can include mercury in the manufacture of it. There, there's just nothing promising with that. Uh, so no high fructose corn syrup and try to limit all processed sugars in general. So, uh, deep thoughts. Uh, one of my mentors, Dr. Eldred Taylor, he, he, I don't know if he's the one who started it, but I, it's always stuck with me. If nothing changes, nothing changes. If, if your diet does not change, it's going to be hard to change your health. You know, it's going to be hard to change the projection of your health. And so it, it's a lot of health starts or a lot of health begins, a lot of health improvement begins with what you're eating, with your dinner table. A good friend of mine, as, as she was uh, being wheeled back to surgery, she said, I, got, I think I did all this with my fork. And um, uh, honestly, she was right on. And I tell patients, food's working for you or it's working against you. Evaluate, is, is food feeding you or not? And please make some changes if necessary. This was a uh, picture of a restaurant uh, last summer I had a great opportunity to go to Ireland and it was wonderful and in Europe their attention to food and food quality is much much higher than ours they don't allow many of the chemicals uh, that we allow in our food supply even if you go to McDonald's uh, which I wouldn't recommend in Europe uh, go somewhere else but even if you go there it's got to taste a little different because they don't allow some of the chemicals and, and bad fats that we allow in our food supply they're much more attentive to this. But this is just, just uh, if you can't see it, in the middle of the slide it says, we use Melody Farm pasture free range eggs. Melody Farm is a biodiversity bio award winning farm in County Clare. Uh, that's some real attention to where is our food coming from and how healthy is it and, and what's the vitality of the animal and the earth that's producing it. At the bottom, uh, just as a side, they have 12 different food allergens listed. Again, they're very attentive to what is going on in the dinner plate. Very attentive to uh, additives and preservatives and things that may not be necessary or may not be healthy. Uh, they're listing them because they want, they want their citizens to be attentive to the food as well. This is just one example of 
we had a lot of patients come in with, with high blood pressure and one of my newsletters that I get, they, they had an article just saying, by just switching uh, salt, this is a salt substitute, but it's sodium free, but even just switching to a reduced sodium salt, which means they've taken some of the sodium out and they've put potassium in, they are seeing significant improvements in blood pressure. So just by switching the type of salt a person might use, they can see changes in blood pressure. And, and that's wonderful for those who may be borderline blood pressure, who are hoping to avoid another medication, uh, just simply changing the salt shaker a little bit could be helpful. So uh, just be aware of that. Soft drinks, of course, are a big one. Uh, there have been many studies that are saying this is where a majority of our calories are coming from, are from actually soft drinks. And there have been some studies that have shown they're very hard on the brain, with memory scores being worse, uh, demonstrating increased risk for Alzheimer's, as well as with artificial sweeteners, increased risk for stroke. And, yeah, I mean, I, they taste good, I admit, but it's... It, it, an aging brain, uh, these these problems are real and, and, and they're not good and, and we can we can try to help prevent that. So, game plan, uh, Jackson County words of wisdom here, if you can hunt it, pick it or grow it, you can eat it, okay? Three veggies, three fruits, clean proteins, no bad fats, no partially hydrogenated oils, which are bad fats, no high fructose corn syrup, and just try to be mindful of your daily sugars. If, if people, when, when, when food gets confusing and, and people say, eat this and don't eat this and don't eat that, eat that, uh, this is a book that I like called The Obesity Code. It's, it's really a good book on nutrition and he goes through a lot of the uh, history of where certain uh, dietary concepts came from, a, a, a lot of what we've been taught through the years really was not based on science, it was just based on uh, let's try this, and uh, or it was even worse based on somebody's uh, industry. And so he, he really kind of sweeps through all that and, and, and tells you uh, where, what the research truly shows and, and how to benefit from that. So exercise, just a couple things on this, it, it is just so important. Uh, there's nothing specific on exercise that you have to do. We just want you to do something. I just, I just try to, to uh, make a deal with patients that they'll find something. If they want to do a class, if they want to walk on their own, if they have a buddy that they want to train with, what, whatever it is, do some videos at home, join a gym, whatever people like, just please do it. Do it regularly. There are so many benefits. It, it truly is one of the best treatments for bone density. I included at the end the cyber study. This was uh, one I just saw this week. They were doing cancer treatments in men in this study, and in, in half the group uh, it was for prostate cancer. So when in half the group, they just kind of followed how their bones did. The treatment they were on was known to cause um, bone loss known to cause significant bone loss in the men who did this treatment for prostate cancer. In the other group, they were on the same treatment, but they had them exercise. Actually, uh, it was in Europe, so the exercise in Europe, soccer, so they had them play a little bit of soccer each week, two to three days a week. And the group that did the exercise had no bone loss, even though it is very common with this treatment, whereas the group who, that, that did no additional exercise, significant bone loss. So it's, it's, uh, the, the exercise is tremendous for many reasons, but, but the, for, for those of you who are thinking about bone density and preventing osteoporosis, it's, it's almost a necessity. It's, it's, it's like a prescription. Uh, it's very important for diabetes in helping your body uh, manage sugar effectively. We're going to talk about it in just a second uh, in terms of Parkinson's and even mood. Um, I want to talk about spirit or, or emotional health just a little bit. And these are some of the topics as far as sleep and screen time and just how the body 
the physical body and how the emotional body are connected. And I want to go through a breathing exercise that I, that I do. It's very simple. I, I, I like very simple. We do need help in the spirit side. Uh, I've got some stats up there in terms of depression, in terms of anxiety, in terms of it occurring in our younger folks, and it's increasing. Uh, it's, it's not only affecting their health, it's um, you know, affecting work, it's affecting finances. This is a, a, a big and growing issue. And this slide did not work, I apologize, but each of these columns is another category in mental health. And in each of these categories, the United States ranks very poorly. And we're, we're third worst in mental health burden, uh, according to the World Health Organization. So we have nothing to brag about there. Um, dang it. Okay. I missed the slide. Um, guys, I want to go through a... Uh, so in terms of, of mental health, I want to, I want to go through a, a breathing exercise that I do every day to help with stress. And, it, and it's very simple. I usually do it first thing in the morning, but you can literally do it any time. And um, all it is, I get in a comfortable place, usually I'm sitting, and for two to three minutes, I will take a breath in that's a, a five count. I, I count to five in my head. And then I will exhale for longer than five. So the goal is to exhale a little bit longer than I inhale. So I'll try to do five in and six out or seven out. As you get practice, you can go on that exhale quite a bit. But when you do a longer exhale than your inhale, it helps your fight or flight system calm down and it helps your rest digest system kick on. And it, it's easy to do, no pills required. And, and I, there, there's lots of different breathing exercises and, and, and really any of them are good, but I had started, I tried this one and after about a week, I just found I was just, I just was less stressed. And, uh, Two weeks, it just really fit. So I, I just, I keep doing it. I usually, again, do it in the morning. You could do it multiple times a day if, if you are in a busy or stressful <coughs> time. And uh, I find as I practice it, it's more available to me when I am stressed and I, and I need a little extra help. The, uh, as we were trying to get the slides to the computer, I, uh, I, I don't, I'm, I'm just not very technical. So I, I, I had to do this in a couple different emails and it didn't, I, I missed a few, but I, I, uh, I found a study where they looked at screen time and depression. So screen time in your cell phone, your iPad, and so on. And they found increase, uh, significant increased rates of depression with increased screen time starting at, in this study, starting at one hour, okay? So, uh, especially in females, especially in younger females, as the screen time went up, so did depression. And, and I, I have a 17 year old daughter. If, if we told the kids in the high school, you get one hour of cell phone time a day, there'd be like a revolt or a riot. But that's where the, the depression, the, the mental health issues started just that little bit. So when you, um, I, there's my cell phone, there's my iPad, I have these things as well. But we've got to be asking ourselves, whatever we're doing, whatever we're looking at, scrolling at, searching, so on, is it, is it serving us? Is it benefiting us? Is it, is it, is it healthy for us? Uh, and then included with that is my plug I always like to do, please feel free to turn off the news. I, uh, uh, throw that in. I always like to, um, I just, I just find the news stressful and, um, uh, I don't know that that's going to advance your health any. Um, so now guys, we're going to talk about toxins. Um, in this one, there, we're going to cover several, several slides. Uh, but some things to know, this is kind of an educational part. Some of the food stuff, maybe you've heard, uh, exercise we know is good. The toxins we've got to talk a little bit about. There are 70,000 toxins allowed in the United States for various reasons. And when they're allowed in, 
they just have to pass safety in terms of that toxin. There's no discussion, sorry, of how they interact with each other. So we don't know um, if we add this one to the environment of, of 70,000 chemicals, what's it going to do in combination? Uh, there can be all sorts of problems to the body, and we've just got to be very aware of this because it is starting to cost our health. Um, I, I wanted to put this up because a lot of the work that I'm going to show you comes from Dr. Pizzorno. He's, he's the author of this book. This is uh, Dr. Pizzorno, a, a famous uh, naturopath physician. Um, he lectures worldwide. He's, he's semi-retired now, and in his retirement, uh, quote unquote, he's been studying toxins even more so, and decided to write this 700-page textbook. And so he is an expert. Um, he, he has been studying this a lot, and uh, I've listened to several of his lectures in recent years. And so some, a lot of these slides are either coming from his information and his books and so on. This is a real busy slide, but just to say uh, these are different chemicals. On the end, on the farthest end on the right is mercury, next to it is lead, next to it is cadmium. And just if you can see where all the X's are as far as poor cognition, memory problems, depression, tremors, fatigue, headaches, poor sleep, and so on, um, just with two or three of the chemicals of those 70,000, you start covering a lot of stuff. This is another slide, and it's on toxins. Uh, it's paired up with the next slide I'm going to show you, which are two of my favorite slides. They're very important. This one is talking about sugar consumption in the United States for the past 200, about 180 years. And if you can see the line, it's, it's fairly straight up. Uh, we're, we're doing a great job at eating a ton of sugar. And the, the line is going up now at about 1960. That yellow arrow is saying that's when the diabetes really started to kick up a notch, okay? Uh, diabetes wasn't nearly as common as it is today, uh, but in the 60s, it, it, it occurred before then, but that's when it really started to go up. So we saw this sugar increase, and then we saw, finally saw a point where diabetes started to follow. This is toxins in diabetes. So if you take one more look at the sugar curve, and you can see uh, as they collected data from 1820, it took about 140 years for the body to start to really give way and the diabetes to start to really gain momentum. When we look at toxins in diabetes, if you can tell, there are two lines on there. But they are very closely related. So the, the toxin line, uh, we're following back into the 40s, and as it goes up, so does diabetes. Toxins may even have a stronger relationship to diabetes, or as strong as sugar does. This is a big deal. This is another one. These are, just, again, from his research on the food list. It's got cantaloupe, carrots, cheese, peanuts, so on. Uh, you know, healthy things, even salmon, can have some of these chemicals uh, shown in it, uh, including DDT and a few other foods that, that we need and are trying to avoid. Glyphosate is one of the active ingredients in Roundup, and a few years ago, a uh, group did a study on oats, and they took uh, several samples of oats from the grocery store, so things like Quaker oats and Cheerios, and they looked at things that, that had oats in it, then they compared them to organic oats. So they did 45, uh, they picked 45 items from the grocery store that were not organic. 43 of them tested positive for glyphosate, again, which is in Roundup. On the organic side, they, they found 16 items and five tested positive. So it was lower, it's still present in some, it was lower, but if it's, if it's not organic, for oats, unfortunately, it oftentimes has Roundup in it. And I, I, I say that not, not to, uh, I, I don't want to scare anybody tonight, but I do want to educate you. I, I do want to inform you. Because if we don't know this stuff, we're not going to change it. 
toxins in food. So we're going to know the dirty dozen and clean 15. I'm going to show you that list and then where to get it. Uh, these are just some, some more information to say organic food can make a difference. They have a third less chemicals, uh, less bug spray residues. The bottom one says commercial potatoes have twice the metals of bug spray as organic potatoes. Uh, toxins and obesity, again, these are just a couple of examples. Bisphenol A is used in plastics, and various studies have shown that if uh, people with higher levels of bisphenol A have more tendencies towards uh, higher risk of obesity. This, is the, this list has become known as the dirty dozen. These are the foods found to be highest in pesticides. And I, I want to stress, if you can't get these foods organically, it's not that you shouldn't eat them. It's you try to get organic foods when you can. Even if, if cherries are not organic, they're still better than uh, Oreos. Okay, so I mean, don't, I don't want to send the wrong message. But it is the idea of, with some of these foods, if you can get them organically, if you can get them locally, if you can grow some yourself, that'd be great. And then the Clean 15 are very low in pesticides. So those foods, as you try to watch your grocery dollar, those foods do not have to be organic. Avocados are consistently very low in pesticides, so you don't have to buy organic avocados. Save some of that money and put it towards the uh, organic peaches or what have you. This is found, it's in blue, it may not show up, but it's ewg.org. This, that, it's called Environmental Working Group. They put this list out uh, every year, and, and so you can, you can get that list for free and, and cut it out and, and have it to take to the grocery store or what have you. So another study, this is, uh, been called the 10 study, um, and for the reason why it was called the 10 study, they, uh, this uh, study group had 10 blood samples that they got from 10 different subjects, I think most, mostly on the East Coast. They were not from the same town or from the same hospital. They, they just picked, uh, they were able to find 10, 10 folks and, and got 10 samples. And they were looking for how many chemicals are showing up in the body with these uh, blood tests. And they sent them to a specialty lab where they tested for over 400 chemicals. It's very expensive testing. Some of the chemicals they were looking for included DDT, which had been banned for um, well over 30 years at that time. On average, per sample, so for the 10 samples, they were finding 200 uh, chemicals per sample. They found a range of 200 different chemicals in these uh, blood tests. So these were chemicals that are not supposed to be in the body. These are extras uh, that were being found. 180, as I said, were known to cause cancer, or various ones toxic to the brain. Uh, over 200 have been linked with birth defects or poor development in animal studies. So again, on average, 200, 200 chemicals being found per sample. In addition, then, the kicker to all this is these were taken from newborn babies, okay? These were newborn babies born with these 200-some chemicals floating around in their system. And it, we, we've just got to make changes. I mean, th this is not going to be consistent with health. This is a big part of why we have the, the, the skilled healthcare teams and physicians and nurses and so on and the abilities we have, but yet we still just rank uh, 37th, 40th in the world nationally in healthcare. Again, just another study that when kids are fed more, mostly organic food, they have a ninefold lower levels of pesticide residues than kids who are fed mostly non organic. And it can change rapidly. When you switch to the organic food, they can see that pesticide clearance in as little as five days. So the body is trying to get rid of this stuff. And so if we can give it good quality items, it can clear a lot of this stuff very quickly. So 
and I'm sorry to talk about Thai, it's not very fun, you can't tie many jokes to toxin. But this is another one. Uh, this is one of the, 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 the book I showed you, again, Dr. Pizzorno, who I need credit for this, uh, in one of his more recent talks, which was to a group of uh, physicians, he said, guys, I, I, I'm going to talk on toxins, but I, I'm trying to think about what the talk was be. He said, I, I'm going to talk about arsenic because it's just gotten too important uh, to, to ignore. We, we've got to address this uh, issue. And so with arsenic, uh, it's, it's found especially in the groundwater, I really think. We also see it in, in, in rice and chicken and probably seafood, but uh, I worry about it especially in the water. And uh, again, I, I try to list studies, so this is just not my opinion, but over 50% of the population have, have arsenic levels that can increase risk for disease. That's a huge number, 50%. Uh, there's increased risk for prostate and lung cancer as well as skin cancer risk. This slide, wherever you see color uh, on the United States, that's where they're finding arsenic in the water. Okay? Wherever you don't see color, that they're either not finding it or they aren't testing it. Okay? Because they don't want to know. All right? And I, I, I tell you. There, doctor, we're pretty clear, and it's all white. Well, uh, that's not testing it. a good comment because I had a patient recently call yeah. on that and said, How do I get my water tested? And this was not locally, this was to the state. And uh, the state said, Our uh, arsenic tester is down indefinitely, uh, <laughs> is what she was told. So, uh, th 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 this is a big deal. I mean, this, this is one, I, I, I mean, I think all of us have heard about arsenic and murder mysteries or maybe with Napoleon or what have you, uh, so it's known to not be healthy. I, I had no idea how prevalent this is. This is a busy slide. It's, it's just trying to show its linkage to various diseases. We're going to go to this one. Uh, and so this column here, odds ratio for folks who have fought dealt with gout, which can be a very painful joint condition, five times risk uh, with arsenic, prostate cancer, 3.3 times increased risk, pancreatic cancer, increased risk, diabetes, increased risk, bladder cancer, are just to name a few uh, increased risks that Dr. Bizzorno's found a, a, a big deal, a big deal. The, the, the one silver lining to arsenic is it is one of those toxins that we can get out very quickly. In three or four days, we can eliminate it. The problem is we just keep getting re-exposed to it. This is, again, going back to that site, the Dirty Dozen. They have a lot of information on their site that you can use. This, uh, they have a database called, they call it Skin Deep, where they have, uh, well, now it's 95,000 products. So if you have... Uh, skincare products you're using regularly, you can research it through their site and see what kind of grade those products get. Uh, when I've taught a nursing class in the past, I would have the students look up several different products they would use, and they would find lead, they would find mercury, uh, some cancer-causing agents, and products they might use otherwise every day. And so uh, that's, that's just a resource to have as well. <coughs> Okay, toxins are depressing. I'm sorry about that. I, I wanted to educate. We, we uh, I, I like lighter conversations, so we're gonna. We need a hero, all right. And I think I found one. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Are I gonna do it? It's probably not. My my kids did not think that was gonna work. <laughs> My Photoshop skills are, that, that's the extent of my uh, tech, tech skills right there. Uh, so, I'm going to slide in one more topic here. Um, I put this in, uh, actually I, 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 I like the uh, basic uh, crowd on the interview, the crowd on this, but uh, what lies ahead, what lies ahead for our economy? Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of opinions. Um, I, I've 
I'm certainly not the best to ask on economy. If I knew more about finances, I'd probably be retired, but I, I'm still working. Uh, so no one, no one knows that. I sure don't know. But I know there are plenty of people that say there, there may be some tougher roads ahead. You know, maybe so. Um, and so I, I think we, we've really got to be thinking about how can we strengthen ourselves as a community. You know, what can we do for our, our environment, think about arsenic, uh, talking to our legislators to help that, and, and then working on our local food economy. What I mean by that is, is just, you know, with a lot of problems, starting local. This is a book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and I, I don't remember exactly when it was written. I want to say 2005, give or take. And he, he talks a lot, again, about nutrition. He talks a lot about where uh, some of our poor quality food comes from and where some of our, our best quality food comes from. But he, he brings up the comment that uh, a quarter of our fossil fuels are spent transporting food back and forth say from California to here and to the East Coast and so on. And he, he says in the book, again, 2005-ish, what have you, what would happen if a world catastrophe hit and, and shipping was disrupted? What are you going to eat? What is in your area? And, you know, interestingly enough, when COVID hit, there are a few days when the grocery stores were pretty bare. Uh, you know, we got through that and, and, uh, and, and shipping continued, but it didn't seem as realistic when I read it the first time as I, I feel it could be now. And, and one of the arguments he makes is you've got to support your local food economy, be it your farmer's market uh, and, and, and supporting that farmer's market and helping it grow if, uh, if we can increase the vendors who come and, and, and they sell their products then we're going to encourage more vendors to come and that benefits all of us. We have, and I, and I apologize I didn't list everybody, but local growers who are providing uh, beef and, and eggs and all sorts of things uh, and, and there are, I'm sure there are many others, they benefit from us buying the product but more importantly we benefit from them. We need these local growers growing quality products so that they're available to us regularly, but, but if, if shipping or costs or what have you did cause a major disruption, we need, we need to be able to have that available in our community. Um, and I say try growing something yourself. I try to do that every year. It, uh, it's not pretty, but, but uh, it, it's fun. It's therapeutic for me. Uh, Big, big changes for the community. This was a study from New Zealand. And they said when they had gardens at school and they studied student behaviors, they found that having a garden at school that the students would help out and participate with uh, was associated with lower prevalence with, of being overweight. Very simple. And I, I, I've always enjoyed this. Uh, the Victory Garden, uh, someone had uh, published that during World War II, 40%, which seems amazing to me, 40% of the, uh, the produce, fresh produce for the country came from just personal gardens, home growers. Uh, I, I don't know if we need to do that now, but if we, we could just increase uh, a little bit, I think it would be fantastic for our health. I also want to talk about community in terms of exercise. I think this is, is a wonderful example of what our community is capable of in terms of patient need. This is the Rock Study program. This is a program that's been developed and is, is used nationally for Parkinson's disease. And, and it is very, very successful. Um, it's, it's, to me, integral. It's, it's uh, an absolute part of Parkinson's treatment. And I've had patients tell me that this is what's helped stabilize my symptoms, sometimes even reverse symptoms. And I'm so thankful that now we have this in our community. And it was because of community members saying, hey, I would really like to have this locally so we can participate in this program and the hospital foundation. And I believe the, the Masons uh, 
were very helpful in, in putting this together. And then uh, a local gym saying, we'd really like to be participating in this as well. And all these groups coming together for the benefit of everyone, for the community, uh, being able to uh, have this available. And, and it is, it is a tremendous program. And uh, I've already gotten feedback from patients who are doing it here, and, and they're, they're very happy that, that we've got it. This is when a community comes together and says, all right, what, how can we uh, bring about a very positive change? And, and this is it. I, I, I'm grateful to all parties involved in that. Uh, I, I, growing up, I was a big fan of Thomas Jefferson, and, and I like this quote. If people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take, their bodies will soon be in a sorry state as our souls who live under tyranny. <coughs> and, I, I, uh, that's, that's spoken by a guy who had to sign his life away uh, to fight for his freedoms. And I think we should take a listen to him. My last, um, my last plea to you is, is please communicate to your elected officials on, on any level that you like, on all levels, preferably local, state, national. Uh, certainly voting is important. And, and and ask you all to do that, but but today I'm asking you to do it before November. Talk to them now, while they while they're really listening. Okay, they're while they want to get reelected or elected. Uh, talk to them about toxins, about organic food, about nutrition, because these items get very little attention. They get very little support. Uh, they get very little help. They get overlooked or they get overstepped, they get uh, overshadowed by, by huge lobbies. And, it, and, and there have been some things in, in my world of integrative medicine that would have long been lost had people, the community, patients, uh, not stepped up and said, hey, we want this taken care of, we want this right. And so I would, I, I would just implore you all to, to please uh, get in frequent communication with our elected physicians <coughs> and, and, and talk to them about what we've talked about tonight, about your interests, about your health, because uh, some of these issues are, are, are really bubbling under the surface, like arsenic, for example, and it's not going to, when I, when I have a patient have a positive arsenic test, we talk to them about, all right, you need a good water filter, and there's certain vitamins we might use, but ultimately that's not enough. Uh, we, we've got to get the arsenic out, which means we've got to stop putting it in. And, and that's got to come uh, with some help from, from our leaders to make that happen. The superhero is you guys. Uh, from making the changes, putting it together, find your superpower, Bring it to the community, like the Rock Study program. Uh, find your exercise. Find your breathing technique, your de-stressor, and uh, and talk to our elected officials. Let's let's really work this year. Uh, no matter what's coming economically, let's strengthen our health. Let's strengthen our community, so we're much better ready to raise it. Thank you all for listening, and, and I appreciate you coming. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about the substitutes and everything for sugar. You know, we eat less sugar. Okay. Yes, sure. We that grew up on sugar. Right. Um, how do we get ourselves? What do we? You can't just give it up. Sure. Your body's going to revolt. Right. So how? Do, what do we get or use to stop to where we can get to that level of no sugars? Couple of things. Right. Uh, yeah, and, these, and, and guys, I, I'll, I'll readily admit, I used to be embarrassed, but I, I like sugar as much as anybody else. I mean, I do. Uh, they, they did a, I, a long time ago, I read about a study where they put uh, their test mice in a cage, and these, these mice could get as much cocaine as they wanted, or they could get as much sugar as they wanted, and they would choose the sugar. So, I mean, it's, it's a powerful thing. 
And uh, it, it, is, it is tough, it's a transition. The first thing I say is be very choosy about what you keep at home, okay? What is available is gonna dictate what you eat. And so if it's, if, 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 if uh, I'm gonna pick on Oreos. If Oreos are my weakness, and I've got two packs of double stuffed Oreos, I'm gonna eat Oreos. So I, I, I gotta get them out, I gotta get them out of the shopping cart, okay? Secondly, have plenty of things that are healthier options to eat. So pick your favorites. Um, my kind of go-to snack that's a little bit sweet, a little bit salty is pistachios and raisins. And so I'll, I'll do those. It gives me sweet, it gives me crunch, and that helps kind of curb that sugar craving. And, and I try to just have things that essentially just fill me up and distract me from more sweet stuff. Now, I'm not going to tell you I'm perfect, but I try to not keep it in the house so that if we are going to have a dessert or something, I go get it, I pay for it. Maybe they charge a whole bunch of money and I get frustrated how much money I pay and then I, then I don't eat it for a while. And, so, uh, and then I try to fill up on it. The, the healthier the diet is, the more nutrition you get in, the more likely you get satisfied. So, that may be a question. With the sugar substitutes that were initially put forth as being better, it seems like they're finding out they're not. They, like, like with uh, the stroke with artificial sweeteners, for example, I, I don't have a love for, for artificial sweeteners. I'm not opposed to stevia, and uh, there's one called monk fruit. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to them. I don't use them every day. I don't, I don't care to use them every day because I'm, I'm sure there's still some baggage attached to them, but I don't think they're as bad as aspartame or... Uh, Splenda. I, I use, I've used aspartame just a little, and I, as I've told some of you before, I use it around my house to kill ants. So that's, <laughs> that's what I use it for, and it, and it works. Huh. For those people that cook at home, uh, like for me, the first thing I do is cut the sugar in half in the recipe, because I've noticed it makes no difference whatsoever. The product still tastes the same when you make cookies or brownies or whatever, right. just cut the sugar in half. Excellent, excellent idea, that's terrific. Uh, kind of to follow up with your question on sugar, at one point in my life I weighed 256 pounds. What I started doing, when I picked up something, I started reading how much sugar it had. I eliminated all the soda pop, I was a junk food junkie, chips was my go-to, chips of Hoy cookies. And I decided I better get living or get busy dying. So you are going to crave something. What I did, you know, you get like those little snack size things. I get that, you know, because you can't go cold turkey because your body. But by doing that, feeding that craving every now and then, then after that, you just kind of lose track of it on there. And then I eventually got down to 147. Excellent. The, the food industry is not a bunch of dummies. I mean, they, they know what sells, and sugar helps those sales. And so they, they're, they're not afraid to put the sugar in. And um, so it, it is hard, and it's tough. And you want to get those processed foods out because they're just loaded with sugar. And as the mice showed us, sugar is very addictive. So it's just a, uh, a, a process that just keeps cycling on itself. Yeah. And I have another question. If we have these products out there that may cause or contribute to cancer, how are they being, I mean, how can we legitimately market those, like in the health and beauty age or whatever? And then, I mean, you know, my thoughts, because I come from a, an agricultural background too, and a lot of your mom and pop, my grandmother and grandfather, they farm. You don't see that. It's more commercial farming now and stuff, and they're probably padding the pockets of some legislatures too. Because, you, you know, I think about uh, runoff, ground runoff and uh, ground contamination of our water sources through the use of herbicides and things of that source. Also, too, that uh, honeybees, which I don't know if a lot of you 
follow anything on Facebook that when farmers spray chemicals and people are um, using honeybees and such, that can go in there and just wipe out a colony. And in Illinois, uh, if if you raise honeybees or you know you're into that uh, honey part of that uh, process, the farmer has to give notice to that farmer that's doing the honeybees too that they're going to spray or whatever. So I mean, a lot of that goes hand in hand. We kind of in the end are our own demise. Absolutely, the, the the industries that participate in some of these problems and very strong lobbies. And again, you know, Dr. Winley's not going to outspend them. None of us in this room combined are going to outspend billions of dollars. It, it is our, it is our calling and bothering our lawmakers to say this, this has got to change. And when, when enough people, it has happened, when enough people do that and call, changes start to occur. And, and that's why, you know, you know, this information isn't all fun, but, but you've got to know so that we can make the changes and make the text and the phone calls and the emails so they can hear about it. I'm, I'm sure a lot of our legislators don't know this stuff uh, in terms of the toxin and the toxin burden, and, and probably a lot of them are, frankly, peeing out arsenic. And uh, they, just, they need to know that this is going on uh, so that we can start making some changes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard to treat somebody's diabetes or their gout or uh, even worse some of those cancers if they're constantly being barred by some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the arsenic coming from that's like in the groundwater? What's that? Where's the arsenic coming from that's in the groundwater? Where's, what's that? Uh, many places. It was used in some pesticides. It's used in um, treated, some, some treated lumber. Um, and then it was for a long time it was fed to chickens. Apparently, the, the, the rationale I heard is it made the meat pink in the supermarket, so they thought that's what people what? That's what appealed to the shoppers. So they, they they fed arsenic to the chickens. Now supposedly that's not being done, um, but I don't. From what I read, it's not. I don't. I don't. I don't know how well it's placed. I don't. I don't know. So, uh, but it was done, and it was a problem. Sometimes uh, it doesn't necessarily mean calling your congressperson. You do more locally. Yes. So what happened, the situation to me is I like Aldi's. They carry a lot of organic products. Mm -hmm. um, and I, their saltine crackers that they had in the store, they used to not have high fructose corn syrup in. And so I would buy those crackers. And I bought a package and I thought, oh, they changed the packaging. I got it home and I looked at the label and it had high fructose corn syrup in it. Since I had the old package and the new package sitting right there, I called all these. The lady took the information off both packages, asked me the store name and everything. And by the end of the week, they had the old crackers back in the store nice. and the new ones were gone. Wonderful. And so I know all these is more than willing to help you out because I've called and I've verified that their tomato products are in non-BPA <coughs> lined cans. And so, shop all these, and if you have a problem or a question, call our customer service number because they will make it good. Wonderful, fantastic, great tip. So I've read a lot about sugar alcohols, which is another sweetener. Um, it's not sugar and it's not alcohol, but it's a sweetener. What do you think about those? Are those okay or not okay? They're okay. They're not great. They're they're not. They're, again, they're not the worst. They're not something I would I would use every day. Uh, there's uh, one called xylitol, which is actually very good for the teeth. It can help fight cavities. Some people don't tolerate them because they're a little hard on the bowels. So it's they're they're not they're not bad. Uh, but I, I just wouldn't say they're perfect. Okay. I'm just told by my vet that xylitol will kill your pets. It will. To dogs. Yeah, <laughs> dogs. So, so, yeah. So, so you want to be careful if you are using it. Right. Two questions. The first uh, has less importance due to your Thomas Jefferson uh, quote up there. But, you know, with all the billions of dollars we spend, where's the FDA? <laughs> I mean, why do they allow this stuff? So that's the first question. The second question is I take the balance of nature thing. I do three veggies and three fruits a day. What do you think about balance of nature? Uh, 
So with, with the first question, a lot of the problem with the FDA comes back to funding and just just having enough resources to watch this stuff. Usually there's just not enough people to police it. The other problem is uh, with some of the governing bodies, they get, they get tax dollar funding and then they get funding from the entities they are supposed to govern. So, you know, how's that gonna work? Not real well. So, um, in, in terms of the supplement, with any supplement, it, there are some rules that, that apply. You wanna make sure there are no artificial colors, no uh, artificial sweeteners, uh, you do want to try to tackle things through diet first and then supplement either through wherever you're deficient or targeting certain illnesses or um, if there's specific family, family history that your, your, your system might be weak and then target that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I wanted to make a suggestion on a movie if anybody wanted to watch. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it called Dark Waters. Um, it's a really good movie. Um, but like if you're a beginner and like going down the and rabbit hole and trying to clean that up. But um, it's a movie based in like West Virginia and how DuPont, the company DuPont had like heavy influence over the community. And they were able to cover up all the dumping of chemicals into the environment. And there was like a bunch of birth defects and just a lot of wrong going on with me. But it's a really good movie and it actually changed my life. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Just, Thank you for movie, sharing. Uh, Dark Waters. It's a 2019 movie with Mark Ruffalo. A, a movie especially for younger family movie. Uh, you know, for family members, is uh, there's a movie out there called Social Dilemma, and it talks about uh, social media and and, and the, the the downsides of it. And it, it is an interview of a lot of the people who originated some of these websites, from Facebook and, and Twitter and so on. And and they they admit that you know we we created this, we had no idea where it was going to go, but. <coughs> we really started to see how addictive uh, and, and, and emotional uh, these, these social media products can be. And uh, it, it can be really hard on anyone of any age, but especially our, our youngsters. So uh, that's another one that, that might be worth them viewing. So yeah, great, great comment, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you all. Thank you all for your time, and uh, uh, thank you for coming and, and supporting supporting our lectures. Can you, can you go back to the Thomas Jefferson quote? Uh, take a picture. Please, yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely.